Hi everybody and welcome to this video which I'm very excited about because I get to speak to one of my favourite people and also share some exciting news that the lovely Anna McCarrow who's joining me today has written and is releasing a brand new book and it's all witchy, it's all romantic and it's all fairy. So let's say a big hello to Anna. Hi there Anna. Hello my darling. How are you? Are you very oh, excited? Oh romantic and here it is. Oh my gosh this is so exciting. So you, you told me this just arrived this moment this in the it post. literally just arrived 10 minutes ago at the, the box of um, my pre-orders oh somebody knocking on the door they can go away um they're not bringing me any more books so i don't want to know they're probably just bringing me something boring oh, yeah, um, exactly. it's not the books excuse me no no thank you no um so yeah and that's, that's interesting because we just arranged this meeting to be this morning and uh we were gonna do it earlier but if we did it earlier there would be no books so Magic. It, my lateness is obviously a really good thing. <laughs> it's not your lateness at all. No, it's, doing it. it's a lovely thing. Oh, no, it's exciting to talk about. So, I mean, I've been very lucky enough and I've already read the book online as a sneak preview, um, mm. and I absolutely loved it. And, um, I, well, I'll talk about what I love about it. But um, first of all, would you like to introduce the book to people? Or do you like, yeah, it's sort of a little bit of a brief overview for people. <laughs> Um, I'm, oh, I'm going to hold up the poster. Yeah, and the poster. I wish I would have, I have something to hold too, but I don't. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. Anyway, it's, uh, it's called Daughter of Light and Shadows, and it's the first book in a series. I'm just working on book two at the moment. Yay! Um, um, <laughs> not, um, I'm not sure how many there will be, as it depends how well it does, to be honest. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's a fairy and witchcraft series and it's um what's a, what's called a fantasy romance but it's also set in the contemporary world so that's a lot to take in mm -hmm. um so it's about a uh, a modern day hereditary witch faye morgan great name yeah great name uh, she lives in a little coastal village in fife which is it's fictionalized for the purposes of the book but um is very much based on um in on that area and uh she runs a shop called mistress of magic there which is a lovely magic witchy shop um in a little tiny village and her family have been the witches in the village kind of since anyone can remember um and uh her grandmother in particular has kind of trained her in the the, the kind of the more of the folk traditions of um traditional scottish witchcraft rather than wicker per se but her mum um opened when she kind of opened the the, her, the shop in the 70s also taught her kind of that um more modern witchcraft as well anyway so the story is about Faye and how she falls for a fairy king who that's the fantasy element well it's not fantasy is it but that's no, what makes yeah. it fantasy romance that's what the, that's what everybody thinks is the fantasy bit which we don't <laughs> Exactly. Um, so she has a romantic relationship with a fairy king. As but she do. also has a romantic relationship with a human man as well. Uh, mostly because I just wanted her to have all the sex <laughs> and have a great time. Uh, no. <laughs> no. Oh, sorry. No. Okay. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah. So and then stuff happens basically, and there's lots of subplots in there about um a lot about healing um a lot about families a lot about ancestral trauma so i touch on the uh, scottish witch trials a bit it's yeah. not like a it's not a, a key part of the story but it's very much in there in the background about something that has happened um that's particularly relevant to, to fay um with a family stretching back into a scottish history and um, how that makes her feel as a woman and a, and a witch today. Um, and uh, yeah, it's also kind of like small towns and um, kind of stepping into your magic. And obviously a lot uh, of time is spent in the fairy realm as well. Yeah. Absolutely. What I love about, well, I love lots of things about it, but there is so much you've brought into it, isn't there? I mean, and it's so much real stuff from a witch's, from a magical point of view. From someone who's reading it from just a, you know, a, a normal point of view, they're like, okay, that's a lot of fantasy. But actually from someone who's a witch and someone that's pagan as you are as well, just bringing in those aspects, it's, it's rarely done and it's rarely done well as well. And um, it's brought in 
spells it's brought in actual fairy folklore it's not it's you know of course you've envisioned the places and from maybe your journeys or your um you know your visualizations but you've brought in all of the folklore as real as it can be really haven't you and that's what i really love about it. i mean i love the story it's very easy to get into your you're straight into their world and you you find it very accessible but it's it's real spells it's real folklore it's it's none of it's fantasy even though it's brought as a fantasy novel sure and um it's uh, it's being brought out by a commercial publisher yeah. and so you know and it does for them and it does very much fit into that fantasy romance yeah. category but as you say um for our more niche audience as well yeah. it's kind of perhaps another layer um yeah. hopefully it's satisfying yeah and um yeah so i really enjoy writing about magic and mm -hmm. uh, i particularly enjoys kind of researching the scottish folklore a bit more um so i think some things i knew some things not so much i actually didn't know more of the detail about the um the witch trials as well mm -hmm. which was the less pleasant thing to have That's not the, yeah and um it's uh but it's good to know from a being informed point of view yeah. and it was useful to know for the book um uh and also obviously horrifying yeah. um but yeah so i um used the uh tales about kelpies particularly mm -hmm, in this mm -hmm. the, the water horses um so they're in it yes <laughs> they are they're fabulous um, and uh but also what was really useful to me was the um the formal names of the four fairy kingdoms yeah. which i hadn't again specifically come across before doing this work so um i found them so that's murias phalias phineas and um Gorias. Mm -hmm. um so that's what that's the names i've used in this yes. series of books for the four elemental kingdoms and it starts off with uh, the fairy king that <laughs> that fay um uh, loves is in murias yes. which is yeah the water kingdom so that's yeah. where she starts off so my kind of overall plan for the four, four books i are see we go to the different kingdoms sort of you know yeah. we kind of in various different ways um so we'll see if that pans out yeah because i was um, going to ask about why you chose murias you know out of all of the kingdoms but now i can see because it's part of the bigger plan yeah ah, yeah well hopefully so um book two <laughs> yeah fingers crossed pause cross pause cross for all no pause cross. um so book two that I'm writing now, uh, it, again, it's set in the contemporary modern world, um, but Faye has spent some time in Phalias, um, the Earth Kingdom. Fabulous. And she interacts with the Earth Fae, um, who play a different role in her kind of continuing story. Mm -hmm. um, so, so yeah, so that was interesting and i picked up that initially from ray beth um but then realized that she, that that kind of wisdom came from the i think i'm right in saying fiona mcleod writings which were um turned out to be kind of channeled yeah to a um a man who god i've never forgotten his name now this is terrible so uh a male writer um who also wrote under the pseudonym fiona mcleod and he said that Fiona was a fairy who was dictating to him. And so yeah. he published a num number of things under her name, um, fiction and poetry, but, um, and the fairy kingdoms are detailed in a kind of a, I don't know if it's an epic poem, but it's a quite a long poem. Yeah. Um, so as far as I'm aware, that's where those first mentions came yeah. from. And it's a lot in Celtic folklore this is brought up. So it's nice that it's actually being used in, you know in in modern literature and it's uh because it's, it's, it's interesting because it's, uh, it's a lot of mentioning the kingdoms but often not so much going into them and so you get the magical tools from the the magical kingdoms and saying you know where the the she came from and bringing their, those magical tools with them but it's lovely to actually you know in, in ritual and in ceremony these kingdoms are invoked and spoken about but it's actually just lovely to have a journey into them really mm -hmm. which actually mm -hmm. i think is and a whole book sort of journey into them and that's really lovely uh, and i like the fact that you've not made it fluffy you've not made anyone you know it's like shadows and light isn't it it's exploring the the, the the realm of for its danger as well as its excitement and that that the job is 
within you to balance the, 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 those aspects. So I guess in the story phase, because she starts off quite muted as a character, doesn't she? She's not, she's kind of being contained maybe, like quite contained. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. she just expresses and has the opportunity to go into quite a, not a dark, I mean, I guess it's only human moral, like, you know, human morals, of, but going into a place which is seemed not so acceptable, but she kind of, she kind of brings it back for herself, doesn't she? I think that's yeah. what I felt for her. Yeah, totally. It was what I was trying to do, it'd be interesting to see how that goes down. Yeah. Um, and um, so I was very, particularly for me, uh, I was going to say with the Water Kingdom, I always feel it to be very sexual. Um, but actually, I'm going to backtrack on that and, th and say what I discovered in writing this and continuing to write this whole project is that the Fairy Kingdom's all of them very, very sexual places. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Um, and actually, in a very kind of essential, basic yeah. rhythm of life kind of way, because that's exactly what it is, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so uh, it, that was, it was sort of something I knew academically mm. in my head, I uh, knew it intellectually, but then um, came to know, <laughs> I came to know it kind of much more. Um, emotionally and everything, it kind of via the process of, of um, writing these stories. Because for me, anyway, when I'm writing, I'm really, <clears throat> it's kind of a magical process in itself because you are kind of imagining yourself in, in somewhere. Um, it's, it's a combination of kind of visual, active visualizing. Um, it will be, it will contain the kind of. Um, the result of some perhaps journeying as you said that I've mm. that already done and I might kind of come back from a journey with a, a vision and kind of think yes that's exactly how I want that to look. yes that's well not how I want it to look that's obviously how either it is or yeah. I want to see it yeah um, and uh, but also just in the process of writing you are kind of like journeying there you were there yeah. Um, sorry, flab it. Um, there we go, it's good. Now. Anyway, very sexy places. Um, so Fabulous. That was interesting, yes. Um, so, yeah, she, she nothing, it, yeah, the Murias turns out to have a dark side, but as you say, the morality is ours, really, mm. rather than anything else. And I was very in, into the idea of making Faye explore her sexuality and explore herself and the, you know the shadows again that she has within her and just accept them as okay yeah yeah absolutely and um and and that's uh yeah that's really it's a really powerful journey and I, when you so when you did explore murias is it do you have an idea of what it was going to look like or was that purely from what, what your own uh, either research or meditations or visions or did you decide a little bit what you wanted it to be like um there's a bit of both i think i needed it to be um so when she goes to murias she spends pretty much all her time within the castle of murias yes. so which is where finn hangs out so um and i knew before i really started writing those scenes that that's what i needed to happen i needed to be in his gas yeah. and that needs to be a castle basically so there's obvious castle imagery in yes. that bit um but in terms of how she got there uh, so she she gets there by a labyrinth which is mm -hmm. a very tried and tested yes um, imagery but what that labyrinth looks like um i didn't really know until i i started kind of very that evolved by just writing but there was a section where um, I'd started writing and I journeyed and had a very strong vision about that there were four kingdoms but also there was a central kingdom where there was a crystal castle and there were mm, crystal bridges leading from the kingdom into that castle which is I've kind of integrated that into the story um, and I had a very strong image about what those bridges looked like yeah. um, that there was a very deep drop underneath um, that they were quite thin to walk, a bit like, you know, Indiana Jones. <laughs> um, crystal Indiana Jones. Um, and uh, what the castle looked like in the middle. So that, that whole part is very much something that I kind of journeyed and saw, really. 
um, and then yeah and then elements of the labyrinth I mean the labyrinth part was very influenced by labyrinth yes I know I read it and I was like yes <laughs> <Where's David Bowie? laughs> he was in there too <laughs> no one can write about a labyrinth now really in my view without invoking that film the babe with the power yeah exactly it's a tremendously um visionary film i yeah. think in, right. and obviously barry is incredibly sexy well exactly with his tight trousers um, and and also i think as well you've got you know you've got uh jim henson and brian froud and uh wendy froud all kind of help creating with the labyrinth as well so they're very you know family here in 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 kind of but it's, it's like they're visionary so it's almost like by creating the labyrinth and putting that in our psyches, that's created a real level of fairy that we access because it's like it's put in something that we can easily access now because we've had that beautiful connection, haven't we? Yeah, it's so true. I think that that film acts as a, you know, it's a cultural product, but as you say, it's, a, it's actually a tool as yeah. well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the, the labyrinth, you know, being a kind of, I don't know, what would you say, like a meditative way yeah. in. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah, and you have to kind of get rid of your human with the labyrinth because you're kind of helpless to the labyrinth, aren't you? So as a part of you where you're trying to do things in your own way, you have to let go of, which you kind of have to a little bit to go into fairy as well. Yeah, so true. And also um, my labyrinth and, and the David Barry labyrinth um, <laughs> is very changeable and it's beautiful yes. but terrible. Yeah, know, yeah. yeah. And, you know, in parts terrifying. Yeah. Um, so it's a... It's a very interesting image on a, on a very deep psychological level. Yeah, I love it. You just put so much into this one book. And I think, you know, it's, it's, but it also will uh, be appealing to people of all levels. If they just want a sexy romance, it's appealing in that level. If you do want a magical journey as well, it's appealing on that level. And if you have that nice satisfaction of hitting all of that together, you're going to get hitting it on all, on all levels, really. It's, uh, uh -huh. yeah. And uh -huh. also the sexy guys in it. Like, let's talk about Finn. <laughs> <laughs> Finn is rock what? band. <laughs> oh yeah, right. Rockstar um, fairies. What is not to love? <laughs> I, know, I know because yeah, exactly. I just thought, okay, so I'm going to write like about a very, very sexy man now. So who are going to be my models for this? And for me personally, yeah. I go to the world of rock yeah. mostly, yeah. and obviously Barry in, in Labyrinth. Um, but I, <laughs> for me, my, my it was um, a young Thurston Moore from Son Sonic Youth. Oh right, yeah, okay. And my ultimate favourite, Duff McKeegan. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it'd be Duff. <laughs> I know he's tall, he's lanky, he's muscular, he's blonde, he's beautiful. Anyway, so so Finn is he's tall, well muscled. He's like you know got a powerful frame. He is uh, tattooed. Um, he's got sulky lips like this and more. Um, uh, that's and, where the lips uh, came. Uh -huh. Yeah. So for me, that was um, that was what I was going for. Um, you, imagine him, however you want to yeah. imagine. Him. I was seeing a bit differently because obviously, I think you, it's like a whole fairy. It's subjective. You know, you see the, what you find attractive. Totally. Yeah. 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 It was kind of more maybe if Viggo Mortensen. Well, I know Viggo Mortensen is blonde, but if Aragorn, Aragorn was blonde, but a bit more bulky, yeah. a bit more. Yeah. Bulky, that was the vibe, obviously. But that's what I would think would be a nice day. That's, in that's a so, good. You know. That's a good vibe. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Going down that road. Yeah, uh, I'm, down, I'm down that road. We're right with yeah, that road. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and come back so, from the road. Talk to Anna. Come back from the road. <laughs> <laughs> come back, come back. Um, so that was fun. Uh, yeah. Yeah. He, um, yeah, I think there's more to explore with him also, yeah. as hopefully as time goes on, um, he's, you know, his power over. <clears throat> Faye, I think she, she initially experiences it and being in, in Murias as a very overwhelmingly sexual <laughs> experience. Like for a long time, yeah. she's just like, oh, I can't cope with this. Um, yeah, yeah. And, uh, but then she kind of begins to find ways to uh, regain her power in that, yeah. in that situation. Yeah. Um, and um, I think there's more to be go done to kind of look at him as a character as we go on. Um, and I, I think say, I think that the sorry to interrupt. I, no. saying, I think that the fairy sex bit was written really well because it was so. <laughs> I just felt like it was you know there's 
because you get the comparing, you get the, the human sex bit first, and then. <laughs> but it was just actually the, the 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 waves and just the depth of it and the oh, the flowing and the over, overwhelming emotions. I think that was written really, really because it was like, yeah, you know, oh, you know, it's it had that fairy vibe to it. It had that that you know, it felt real. It felt real. Not that I'd know, obviously. But you know. Thank you. <laughs> or oh, do you? Um, well, thank you. I don't, but you know, hard to say, isn't it? The weird thing about writing fairly overt sex scenes yes. is that I am completely happy to do it. It doesn't bother me at all. It worked for the story. It's all fine. What does bother me about it is that my dad will have to read it. I was going to say. <laughs> I, was, I don't know. I've not met your dad. Have I met your dad? Have you met your dad? I don't know. I <laughs> thought about your dad. So I was like, oh, God, he's going to read it. <laughs> well, <that's what> <laughs> I was like, oh no, and it's kind of, you mentioned before this about your family reading. I thought, oh yeah, I think I would have the same thing, isn't it? Yeah, it's just, mm. but it's, 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 yeah, fine. it's fine. It's not, not that, you know, obviously he's a grown up. It's just that he's my, my parent and uh, yeah. yeah. But um, anyway, I can move beyond that. It's fine. Yeah. We're, we're all adults. It's yes. All, um, yeah. So that, but it was quite, it's quite an interesting thing because I'd not, I'd written from a previous trilogy was ostensibly for teens although lots of adults liked it and yes. um so it had it did have a couple of sex scenes in it but they were mm. very you know Teen they were friendly. very subtle mm. and uh, the lights went down and that was it sort of thing so in these I could be a lot more um adult which yeah. was quite enjoyable really yeah I was gonna ask about the transition from was it was it easy to transition from young adult fiction to adult fiction or was it um, a challenge? Um, um, yeah, on the whole, I think. Um, I think I don't think for me there was much difficulty. Um, they're they're very they're sort of both sets of books are very kind of magical in slightly mm -hmm. different ways, and yeah. they're, so they're quite similar in that way. Um, there are slightly different themes in terms of like the writing for teens. It's a bit more about that coming of age time in your life and, mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff and reflecting on adults it, uh, influence in your life and what you think about that. Um, so, but no, overall it was fine. And I, it's just a different project, different editor, different publisher. So therefore that it's always going to be a bit different anyway. Yeah. Yeah. they've been very supportive and nice so far so um but it's just a, it's just an unknown quantity i don't know yeah we'll have to see oh that's good. and what is the release date of this beauty so release is october the 16th fabulous yeah let's have a look at it let's look at it again let's look at it again. let's just see let's just see it again lovely oh, cover i like it <laughs> it's very nice i like she's got the fairy star on her arm as well yes um, I suggested that originally they put the pentagram on, um, so I thought, let's be let's be <laughs> super specific here. Good, good. Um, actually, just quickly, one really interesting thing about uh, kind of the early reviews or the early reception on this one is that some people have said, "Oh, it's really interesting to see a book where you've got like the fairy theme and the witch theme together," because yeah. in kind of um, overall fiction there's there's um fairy fantasy books are quite popular obviously like um court of thorns and roses series by sarah mm -hmm. j mass and um holly black is another mm -hmm. uh, author that writes um kind of about dark fairy kingdoms which is sort of slightly more in the um young adult right. adult flavor, um, area but obviously um uh and then i don't know loads of other kind of adult fantasy writers will use kind of like fairy courts and things so that's quite popular and then um there's a big trend about witches in fiction as well yeah. at the moment both yeah. in sort of like literary fiction actually interestingly and um in other things as well but um so yeah if i had a few comments like oh that's interesting they're sort of like both together which is a funny thing because to me it makes like ultimate sense like why yeah. wouldn't they be together because you know you're you're a witch you're using those elemental powers all the time that's what you do yeah like when you're calling in quarters that's what you're doing you're calling in those powers um 
and they're really intrinsic to being a witch. But obviously, when we're talking about fairies and witches in contemporary fiction, we're, to, we're talking about fantasy witches yeah. and fantasy fairies. So yeah. um, anyway, that was an interesting observation. Yeah, I think it's great though, because it's, for me, it's a relief. You're just like, okay, we've got it real here. Thank you. <laughs> you know, and, and, and um, it's a bit of uh, an eye opener maybe for people who are reading it, who have not got that background they can see oh okay there's witches that can connect with fairy and if it, you know whether they take it as a fantasy or as a, an idea to connect with and also mm. it's good because you've already given the caution it's not all fluff and flowers <laughs> not that yeah. i want us to scare people but as you say not like suddenly you know cast a circle invoke the fairy king and think that'll be fine <laughs> <laughs> this that'll will be fine <laughs> So why? What's, what, could, what could happen? But I like the fact that at the beginning of the story, they're doing a spell, really without thinking the consequences of what that spell is going to bring about. And that's sort of the way the book starts, isn't it, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, because they're, they're three girls who are, frankly, a bit horny, and, um, and uh, none of them are seeing anybody. So they kind of think, OK, let's, you know, let's do this love spell from grandma's grimoire and see what happens Northern um, grandma <laughs> yeah, I know. grandma's grimoire another interesting thing about like the early reception of the book is apparently um there's been a really positive response to the whole like witch shop theme yeah like, witch, I mean, who doesn't love a witchy shop obviously i know um, I do. And uh, I live in a big witchy shop. <laughs> you do. Well, Glastonbury's a big one. <laughs> so it's impossible to find normal things like tights. <laughs> oh gosh, no, no, no tights here. Unless you want ones with. I oh, know actually, I don't. No tights here or pants. I was going to say unless you want ones like purple and black striped one. But, yeah. Um, get, yeah, which anyway. I do. But, you know. Anyway, tights <laughs> aside. Sorry. Yes. Witchy shop theme. Witchy shop. Okay. Um, yeah. Apparently, that element is really popular with people um that they really like the idea of like you know little kind of antiquarian witchy shop um so yeah cool i think yeah um, uh, that was interesting to me as well i think you never know what people are going to really like and not like before you, all you can ever do is just kind of write what you want to write and yeah um, and see it how works. it it's, yeah no it's brilliant it brings in so much it's like a really good starting point that brings in so many different ingredients and it's i love it that it's sort of set by the sea so you've already got that liminal space haven't you you've already got that you already are between the worlds in those spaces and uh, yeah it's 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 brilliant it's very exciting um and no i love it and i love the magic it's just it's such a relief to see real magic because i think on sky one at the moment that i've got sky I just sort of there's a discovery of witches that book has been uh -huh. televised where witches again are put in the same category as demons and vampires as almost mm. like I, know, so I like the book, don't worry, I do like the book, I like the programme of it, I just feel like... Mm. <laughs> I know. But then I, I was, you know, it's just, uh, it's just a bit frustrating, really, but um, I'm sure some demons and vampires out there are saying the same, me too, I'm so fed up <laughs> of being seen as a fantasy. <laughs> I know. Do you know, yesterday I was actually writing a little paragraph in book two about that Faye finds it really irritating that witches are, you know, mm. lumped in with vampires and, you know, general Frankenstein's monster, etc. at Halloween and um that she has no sense of humor about it which is basically me uh, and yeah. even though yeah. i like halloween you know but um yeah. uh yeah i don't know when this is going to end really ab about um not for a long time probably because unfortunately even though there's a massive um pagan witch alternative religion community in this country and throughout the world in a variety mm. of different ways um the powers that be don't seem to even know that or care. And to them, there seems to be a big disparity between fictional witches and perhaps what they might imagine are people who think they are, but not. I don't know. I don't know what, like, what does the average man in the street think is going on? I don't. Uh, yeah, them. I think I was, I was um, it's interesting. I was listening to this uh podcast of youtube about uh, gerald gardner you know and obviously the the grandfather of modern wicca and, and witchcraft and and that that was really revolutionary that was but that wasn't that long ago really really mm. I, I know it was you know it's in the six fifties, sixties, 60s bringing but you know in, and actually the witchcraft 
Act was just repealed in the 50s. So really looking at the whole thing, it's not that long ago that it was not illegal to practice witchcraft and that people mm. didn't know what wick was and witchcraft was. And I think that there's still people alive today that are from that generation and there's still people that do watch a lot of films that go, witches is like the craft or it's like, you know, mm. Harry Potter. Mm. And actually, yeah. um, it's not that glamorous really. Um, <laughs> But at the same time, it's more because it's personal empowerment. So, yeah, it's a funny one. It's a funny one. But also, in a way, I think we, as witches, um, enjoy a bit of mysteriousness because we don't want it to be. But it witchcraft is never going to be blazed in the light, light of the day that everyone can see everything about it. It's, it, it's in the. It's in that in between. It's in the. It's, it's this mystery at its core. So I think oh. it's it's walking that thin line of going. We're not going to cast a spell on you and make your hair go funny but at the same time you know I don't want it to be totally transparent to everybody because that's the core of it there is mystery and magic in the in the, in the shadows as is your book titled yeah, <laughs> ah, good way of bringing it Mark link. yeah but I was like, before we I know that we've got a little limited time on this uh call uh but before which in case it does go i want you to tell me and tell them where they can get your book when it's available oh. they can buy it from you and all the, the stuff that we need to know okay cool <laughs> i will thank you so daughter of light and shadows out on o october the 16th it's available as ebook on amazon kobo uh google play um or, uh itunes and that will be 99p or 99 cents um, us. on release um and then it will go up in price at some point so yeah. get it on release yeah yeah um you can also buy a paperback version through amazon um and uh, if you should you want to um it i like is, holding them yeah i know I, I would encourage anyone watching who want who sound you know thinks the book sounds interesting and who does like reading on kindle please buy it uh, on the ebook yeah. e actually because um that affects my sales figures and buying the paperback version does not all oh, right okay. so uh, although well, i obviously everyone buy it 99p on october yeah. the 16th, is it the 16th of october it's on uh, on october the 16th yeah, yeah. Cool. Oh, we should be getting it on. Yeah, everyone buy it on the Kindle. It's, it's just a good price. If, you know, just for getting it for the first week or so it comes out, because I'm sure it will go up in price. Just to get it then and just to have that lovely book for that really bargainous price. It's very easy. You could always get it in a uh, paperback as well. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm thinking. That's what I was thinking. Because I do like to hold a book as my house is testament to, full of books. But um, but yeah, and actually, I didn't used to like reading things online, but I have, I'm getting used to it because they are offering you better ways of doing it, aren't they? Like it is more like reading a book now. I'm always, I was a bit of a, a bit stuck in my ways about reading things. Online. <laughs> I was too. But I've just rediscovered my Kindle, and actually, I love it. Um, and uh, it's just great that you can. Well, actually, buy books cheaper. Um, although, you know, that has implications. Yeah, but, um, yeah. And uh, especially if you're, you know, moving around a lot, you want to pop it in your handbag. It's a lot. It's not, you know, lighter and take it on holiday and all that sort of thing. So, um, so yeah, basically, um, do that. Do that. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So, um, yeah, have you got you have you got a website for this, or is it the publisher's website? We can so they can find out more information about the book. There's information on my website, which is cool. annamcaro.com, and um, information there about just sort of other stuff that I'm doing. Um, there is a newsletter that you can sign up to, to just generally keep in touch about all of the books that are coming out in this series, which is. Um, www.bookature which is b-o-o-k-o-u-t-u-r-e.com forward slash anna hyphen mckero so um maybe i'll give that to you and you can put it yeah i will do that and I just let everyone know that this is adult content children do not read this book <laughs> you <laughs> yeah. will need to be a grown up to read it get your mum to read it or your dad to read it but don't read it <laughs> um three themes only yes absolutely yeah um but no i i love it and it, i think as long as you're over 18 it is a brilliant book for people who are interested in witchcraft fairy law and also just generally if you're not even not in that world that's what i love it bridges with what fairy is as a bridge isn't it um it bridges all those worlds really really beautifully so i hope hopefully everyone from all areas will be getting into it um but i think it's it's, it's nice you don't hold back i like it because as you say the fairy world is 
uh, or the fairy kings and the masculine aspect of fairy is very sexual like the fecundity of nature i like being fecundity into conversation mm-hmm. um it's a great word, word. yeah <laughs> um, <laughs> And it, and it has that, and you have not shied away from that. And I love that because we can go romantic on the outskirts, but when you go into meditation or a journey, you go, whoa, it's a little bit. Uh, <laughs> when you go into the white spring and go, whoa, it's a little bit sexy. <laughs> I know. Um, we, don't, uh, we don't really embrace that in our normal lives. Or, well, you know, pop, in our normal culture and everything. And um, it's a shame. Yeah. Um, uh, we should do because, you know, we're sexual beings. The world is a as you say, fecund place, and that is natural and normal. You know, we have bodies, they have desires. That's, you know, that's what we're here to do, among other things. So um, let's not pretend that there's anything wrong with that. Exactly. There's definitely evidence of that, that we're all here. (laughs) (laughs) Do you think there's... As Bill Hicks said, someone's been... (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Go to history, there's a lot of it. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. It's ridiculous to try and pretend that it's, I don't know, somehow wrong. We still have a Victorian like, hangover, don't we, I think? We still have um, a I know, I mean, I, we all understand why, but it's such a job of work to try and shift this anti-body, anti-sex yeah. attitude that we have in society today. And we know it's because of, you know, the very... <clears throat> you know purity obsessed Mm. um uh non-body spirituality we might have been taught through uh judeo-christian religions um or others um but uh it's it just causes so many problems it causes a lot of problems it does causing all of the i mean ultimately it's in my view led to shouldn't be saying this at the end of the interview really but it's uh, resulted in what we could call rape culture in many ways because of this like complete lack of comfort comfortableness we have with our bodies and about boundaries in our bodies and about um the uh what's the word i'm looking for the the, the sacredness of our of our bodies and our yeah. sexuality and about respecting that in ourselves and other but most of all respecting that in other people absolutely um, yeah and, uh, unfortunately a lot of us having these very odd ideas about sex as a commodity with other people and what they can, you know, that they are somehow allowed access to other people's bodies without their permission. So anyway, that's a whole other thing. That's a whole other interview we can do at another point, I think. This is good. I can, yeah, this is good. But um, anyway, the more we can be just open about our bodies. Yeah, and our desires and our, yeah. It's It's all a good thing. It's a good thing. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So... Daughter of Light and Shadows, available from October 16th on for 99 English pence. It's just I know, ridiculous. or 99 uh, American cents. Yes, thank you. Yeah, mm. um, from Amazon, and we're going again, I know you said it already, but I'm saying again, Amazon, iTunes, and other ones, I didn't remember what they're called. Yeah, um, Kobo, Google Play, uh, there is another one. Anywhere that, um, I think, of the main platforms that sell ebooks. But I think everyone should come and look at your author page on Facebook as well, then they can keep an eye on your kind of activity regarding the book as well. So that's on Facebook. It's Anna McCarrow author. Yeah. I'll put Facebook. the link below. I'll put the link. Yeah. Bless you. Thank you. Yes. Cool. So everyone keep an eye on what you're doing and all the excitement around the release. So before it cuts off, I shall... Uh, I don't know when it is going to cut off, but I have been keeping an eye on time. It's all fairy time. I don't know. But I'll please say goodbye because I feel it will be any minute now anyway. So, okay. um, Thank you. Ah, thank you so much. And I look forward to all the launch excitement. And thank you to everyone watching. Yes, thank you. And see you all soon. Okay. Bye.